Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. So in this video, I want to talk to you about allegations that keep coming up about uh, Rocket Lab. And the reason why I'm taking this up is because um, you would have thought that, okay, they released this hot fire video that I'm showing you below. So, you know, that means that the allegations are debunked, but it seems like these allegations keep coming back up that they're misrepresenting uh, Neutron's readiness and they're lying about uh, how the pad is doing and the regulatory approvals uh, and so on and so on. So I decided to um, get to the bottom of this and see who could, who could be responsible for this report and how creditable is this report. And I actually did a survey and I wanted to see, you know, like the community, what does the community think about this? You know, so I, I did a poll and it's quite shocking to me. Um, so 484 people uh, answered and the question was, there has recently been allegations that Rocket Lab is marketing, um, in, oh my God, that's a spelling mistake, is misleading investors by overstating Neutron's readiness. Does this concern you in any way? Please comment below with your thoughts. Uh, no comment, clear BS. I thought that this would be like 95% of the votes. It was 57%. Um, 18% of Rocket Lab investors are worried about that. And that's 484 uh, people answering this. And because it's late, let me just do that calculation. 18.4. Uh, ah, if it wasn't so late. 89 people uh, out of the ones that I have answered are worried about this. And what's even more shocking is 5% of the people, that's 27 people of these actually sold because of these allegations. Um, so I think based on this poll, it's definitely worth to look. And that's what we're gonna do in this video. Please make sure that you're subscribed. And I wanna give a super shout out uh, to the people who support this channel by being channel members. And if you feel you get value out of my videos, uh, I would love if you could uh, think about supporting the channel. The link is in the description box below. So where do we begin? Uh, the document is uh, here. It's a 252 page document. And it is called, uh, the file name is called Rocket Lab Neutron uh, Dump, September 6, 2024. Um, and just so you see, it's a compilation of um, notes about interviews. Uh, then it's a compilation of, um, you know, different emails uh, between people. Um, then it's different government plans, different presentations to different government offices. And everything in this is done. Um, I, I didn't read through the 252 pages, but I went through, uh, skimmed through all the pages and looked at a lot of uh, the data that was in here. Um, so I feel like, yeah, you, you're going to see, I, I feel like I, I'm qualified to give an opinion on, on uh, this one. But because it's 252 freaking pages, I thought that the best way to look at it is actually via this uh, tweet thread uh, that this guy posted, because he actually um, marks out the key points. And I think that they're yeah, you, you will see. So here we go. First allegation. Certain information have been redacted from this document dump, but we can ascertain from the tone and language that this document dump is likely main maintained by government personnel tasked with verifying Rocket Lab Neutron claims and updating government decision makers. So again, did a little research. I was asking uh, around uh, everyone that I could where they uh, got, how they uh, learned about this document. And many people have answered to me that they believe that this is a Freedom of Information Act. Um, uh, like th that's, that's the law that was used by someone to, to get this uh, data dump. And I'm highly doubtful of that because um, I'm not American. I'm a Swedish real estate developer. And so that's important uh, to know. But I think a lot of the legal processes are similar in, in Western countries. And when I went through these, uh, basically, all of the data that, that was there should be freely available data that you can anyways get access to. 
uh, meaning that you, you don't need to use Freedom of Information Act, like you can just probably go into Virginia space or you, maybe you can ask them and they send you uh, this relevant data. That's how it would work in uh, Sweden. Uh, and because of this, I have to assume that uh, this document dump is done by somebody who had a lot of time, and I mean a lot of time, to go to these different agencies and compile all this data and make it into one file. Uh, I would guess that the amount of work that has gone into it is, I mean, I, I would say probably is an, on the order of magnitude of weeks full time. Um, this is going to be important later. Um, so again, another thing that I want to uh, point out here before we start covering uh, the main points um, is that it says that this uh, data is from government personnel that are supposed to, that are tasked with verifying uh, Rocket Lab Neutron claims uh, about their readiness. Um, so here we go. You can see that many things are redacted. Re redacted. They're blacked out. I can't speak English today. Uh, documents recently obtained by staff reinforce that Rocket Lab and Virginia Space are now trying to cover up uh, pad readiness issues from earlier this year. So this one, this one document that they're referencing here is like a compilation of an interview. And again, this is my real estate developer background and having worked with, you know, Swedish governments and we like I have uh, gotten through, you know, different zonings, building permits and, you know, had to have the government come out and, and check that we built apartments correctly. And I can tell you that if the government wants to know how your building project is going, they don't look at interviews you've done in newspaper. They send an actual inspector out who is very qualified to inspect such a site. And then he has a checklist that he checks and takes pictures and, you know, measurements and would give you a very detailed information of uh, based on his expertise that the current construction or, you know, readiness is here. And um, in his in his projection, it's going to take so much months or years to come to here. Uh, so this is a glaring something is very sus here, right? Because um, no government agency in their right mind would clip together interviews that uh, Peter Beck did um, with a newspaper reporter and use that for a um, analysis of neutron readiness to decide on who to award hundreds of millions of dollars of national security contract. Just doesn't happen. So this was tweet uh, number one. Now let's go to... Um, Sorry, that, yeah, that was two. Now we go to three. So neutron launch facility readiness. The pad and launch facility is likely not ready before December 2025 based on pending environmental assessments, uh, certain size, site use approvals, and phase build out that uh, may be behind a schedule to allow Rocket Lab. Rocket Lab's came, claims of neutron readiness mid-2025. So again, uh, this is an email. And uh, it's, you know, blacked out who uh, wrote it. So we don't know who this email was sent to whom. Um, and and I'm, you're going to see this. This will all make sense in them. So um, they are saying that in April 29, 2024, the kickoff confirmed that Rocket Lab still does not have environmental approval for Neutron uh, program at Wallops and that the required environmental assessment will not be complete until 2025. And notice how they're underlying this with red to make sure that you, that you notice this. Um, but look what they didn't highlight. If Neutron is ready for transport to the launch uh, site by December 2025, uh, NASA, Wallops, and Virginia Space may attempt to use an interim written revaluation to bypass NEPA requirements uh, but given the ongoing litigation uh, related to SpaceX Starship program, this is unlikely. So what I can tell you, again, from the sw Swedish real estate uh, developer experience, it's, it's important that I say it because I think that there are similarities, but I could be totally off here. Um, so my experience is, is not U.S. But 
when we have done building permits, and especially sometimes it's super hard because the government is working against you, and sometimes when the government is working with you, it's super easy. And suddenly you find, you know, workarounds and backdoors around everything. And it's very likely that the environmental report, even as it says here, it can be broken up into pieces. We have done this on, on many projects that um, we, di we didn't get the paperwork done to be able to start building the whole project. But, you know, when you start, you anyways never start with the whole project, right? So then you ask the government, can we get approval to start building the foundation of building A? And we, meanwhile, we're, you know, working on the paperwork that you want. And then the minute that is submitted, we go with B, C and, and building D, right? Uh, but the, if the government agrees that there's no more questions about A and they're anyways going to give you the permit when they give you the B, C, D permit, uh, then it, it's very easy to find these bypasses. And, and I would be guessing that the environmental approval is uh, something that everybody understands. It's for, you know, many, many neutron launches. It's for, you know, the, the flight cadence of, and build out of all of uh, wallops. And it's not going to be so influenced by just one test launch, you know? So there, I think it's very easy to find a workaround um, on, on this one. They are simultaneously kicking off the Wallops Island Southern uh, Expansion wise environmental assessment due to both an increasing orbital launch cadence and the fact that many proposed activities were not analyzed in the 2019 PEIS. So again, so you see that there was already uh, some kind of an environmental assessment which approved rocket launches. It's just there is new activities uh, that they also want to examine. And sometimes at the beginning of these environmental assessments, uh, you already know that 99% uh, everything is going to pass, but you know you need to uh, take certain precautions of you know whatever. Uh, and and again, there is there is workarounds. Uh, so I am not at all worried about uh, this. So here's the next one. Uh, more neutron facility readiness assessment. Uh, so this one is a PowerPoint. Um, again, <laughs> you know, I don't think that this was meant for a um, government agency to decide hundreds of million dollars of funding. Uh, I think that this presentation was done um, either between consultants or, uh, you know, some government office um, in, in a meeting to get ready for a bigger decision. So summary, Rocket Lab is still working on phase zero at their neutron pad and has made little progress since March 2023. Uh, the phase one includes items required to conduct stage tests of neutron and only one RPF, which is a request for a proposal, uh, has been released for a relatively minor part of the project la launch equipment vaults. No other RFPs have been issued for phase one. Phase two includes all items required for first launch. No RFPs have been issued for this phase. There are clear design differences between the final 90% of plans by BRPH that were listed for permit in August 2023 and the and October 2022 Virginia space phasing plan. However, the phasing strategy has remained consistent and the order of construction is likely unchanged. Uh, so just to make this simple, it looks like uh, Virginia space and Rocket Lab has made a plan of how they will build out the spaceport and they divided it up in phases. So phase zero was, you know, certain targets and then uh, basically, uh, phase two would be the first um, test launch, and then phase three would be, you know, like when you build out the pad for cadence. Now, here's the issue. Uh, when we plan a project uh, where we're going to build, um, for example, we have a project where we're planning 155 uh, apartments. And the thing is that how you're exactly going to build them requires a lot of engineers to do a lot of work. Uh, so when you submit PowerPoints to the government and when you, when you, when you submit, you know, these uh, very undetailed maps to the government, it's like your best guesses at that time of what is going to happen because the engineers have not been able to do their work. Like in our case, 
the engineers need to uh, look at the traffic, the sound from the traffic. Uh, you know, there is a rainwater assessment. Uh, there is, um, uh, what do you call, I mean, there is, I don't want to bore you guys with that one, but, and, and each of them can show that you need to make changes to the buildings. And for example, in our project, it was also a phased uh, project. We had like a phase one build out and a phase two build out. And then because of the engineers and because of the rainwater, it showed that um, phase one had to be way more extensive than we thought, and phase two had to be uh, way less than we thought. And what I'm trying to say with this is that when you do these presentations and you agree with the government, it's not written in stone. It's not because the engineers, like think about it, when these plans were proposed, they haven't even built an Archimedes engine. They haven't hot fired it. Uh, they were probably in, uh, when is it written? In 2020, um, so March 2023, they were probably testing the components of the Archimedes engine, right? So when you when you when you're undecided on so many details, it's kind of hard to know which buildings you need to put where. I hope um, you can understand that. And then these RFPs, um, I think. Again, I'm, I'm not American, but what they can mean, this is a lot of speculation, is if Virginia Spaceport uh, gets the job done themselves, then they have to do a, an official RFP and, you know, people can uh, bid and do this and this is very easy to follow. But I think when Rocket Lab themselves is building the pad, they don't need to go through this public process of getting in proposals uh, that are registered and, you know, it's an agreement between you and Virginia Spaceport who builds what. So my guess is that if Rocket Lab wants to build the pad fast, they would have said to Virginia Space that, uh, look, uh, you were going to uh, build out this port from $50 million. Uh, let us take that job burden away from you and we, we bill you $45 million. So you win $5 million on this, but let us do it and it may cost whatever it costs. So maybe Rocket Lab is spending 60 million on this, but they win the freedom to choose their own suppliers, run on their own schedules. Um, and that way you will not see any RFPs. And again, if you follow Rocket Lab Twitter, you see that there is super much progress uh, on the pads. Uh, so these statements are false. So now we go to the next one. Neutron readiness, Neutron Archimedes engine may not be keeping up with Rocket Lab's ambitious claims. Note, the date below is a screenshot um, 6th of September, written prior to the recent, Ar recent Archimedes hot fire release on 29th September, which featured an uncut 30 second hot fire burn. So this claim is already debunked. And you can see again that the person who put in weeks of work into this one, is highlighting things that they think is very damning uh, to Rocket Lab. Uh, for example, um, here they're, they're showing in a, that in an interview, Peter Beck is saying, but especially now that we have been around the block a few times, we're able to confidently build an entirely flight ready engine, put it on the stand and it works. So it comes down to just the experience of the team and also the de development approach. Uh, and then they're saying that this so-called flight-ready engine failed catastrophically on its first test. Uh, the fact that it has still not been uh, disclosed to investors, based on public comments by Rocket Lab's VP of Business Development, the engine reportedly had to be refurbished following an incident uh, and uh, a new engine, SN002, placed on the stand, presumably without taking time to understand the cause of the issue or making corrections. According to NASA sources, the engine has not yet fired. Rocket Lab has conspicuously withheld video footage of the SN001 test. So this has been fairly debunked by the hot fire video and uh, Peter Beck saying that there was no uh, blow up of, um, of any engine and you know they're rotating the engines out and, and uh, they're testing them. And this is pure opinions. And again, on this document, it looks like a cut together, you know, piece from interviews and then opinions uh, interjected. Um, and here it's saying, by misrepresenting Archimedes and neutron readiness, Beck and Spice are now intentionally misrepre misrepresenting uh, the company's timeline to profitability. So now, 
question to you who are still watching this is a longer video so you're you're a hero if you're still watching this when you hear peter back saying that we have ambitious timelines at rocket lab and this is a rocket program and they give you a presentation saying like showing how, what's the average time of rocket uh, programs and you know how fast neutron actually is and you know when he's being pushed to to give a date he always says we're shooting for this date, but you know it's a rocket program. Um, Adam Spice is saying we will not be profitable until uh, Neutron is flying and, and off the pad. And whenever that happens, that happens. So do you feel misled by them on Rocket Lab profitability? Um, yeah, because like, you know, how many times has Elon said uh, that FSD is coming this year? And nothing has happened to him. I mean, it's a, it's a startup. I mean, when you're running a startup, you are in, by definition working on something that has not been done before. So you don't have a roadmap. So it's crazy hard to estimate how long it's going to take because it's never been done before. Once you have manufactured 10 Archimedes engines, how easy it is to say how long the 11th is going to take. So I have full understanding for uh, Peter Beck and Adam Spice on this one. And I feel that they are as transparent as they can be. Uh, so again, this person is just uh, trying to stir up drama in my opinion. Uh, and here is the next one. The Neutron, the biggest BS of them all. Neutron launch uh, contracts. So Rocket Lab has recently shifted from uh, claiming that they would sign the first contracts for Neutron after the first hot fire test to not signing any contracts until after they bring the vehicle to market and prove that it works. This apparent change of heart was likely driven by the hot fire test failure and the fact that somewhat easily, a fact somewhat easily withheld from investors, but not from uh, customers interested in signing a launch service agreement. So this is like the biggest logical, um, illogical twist that I don't know, like uh, the, the person who wrote it got themselves into a pretzel. So they are lying to investors by keeping it a secret, but they're disclosing it to customers in order to delay the contracts. But wouldn't they be lying to investors? So if, if they're lying to invest, like, I don't get it. So it's, it's like they're only lying to investors. So they're liars, but they're not, they're very honest to customers. Um, again, this has been thoroughly debunked. And I think that this person is maliciously trying to frame things so that it sounds uh, negative for Rocket Lab. I mean, it was very clear to me that the reason why they're not signing contracts is because they are not willing to discount uh, the Rocket Lab Neutron rocket because they have gone through it with Electron and they're so confident in the demand that there's no reason to destroy shareholder value by discounting something that people would pay full price for anyways. Please argue with me on this one. Um, and I think that this person was saying that the hot fire video was going to come out and then there's a line of like 15 customers and they would just be signing contract one after the other. I think that the hot fire test, what it did is it made the vehicle real and now they can have very serious conversations uh, with potential customers and they have the ability to sign contracts when they are ready to sign contracts and when they can do it without discounts and read only this if they sign the first contracts uh, in January or in March uh, in 2025 is that not after the neutron hot fire test so uh, this is also BS to me and now we come to uh, the last allegation. Um, and again, um, this is like it says here uh, that this is an inquiry by a government official to either the Department of Defense, Spaceport, NASA uh, about neutrons readiness claim. So I highly, highly doubt that this is a government official um, I think that this is a lobbyist who has written an email uh, or a letter uh, wanting more information. Um, and so it says here, again, it's highlighting the damning parts. Infrequent interactions with my office, Rocket Lab has failed to provide any substanti substantiating 
uh, documentation or evidence of an internal schedule showing a path to launch in 2024. Viewing of a realistic schedule that accounts for propulsion and stage test, uh, campaign pad construction and site activation and licensing ac um, actions is a simple and reasonable request. And an inability to provide any of this documentation is deeply concerning. So let me show you what gave it away for me. Um, so this person is asking this government office, given the urgency of this issue, I request meaningful and forthright answers to below questions no later than March 25, 2024. They ask questions, and then this person is asking, had any communications with the Securities and Exchange Commission related to Rocket Lab statement or claims regarding uh, neutron readiness? So if you're a government official who is genuinely concerned about neutron being ready, then that's the only thing that you're concerned about. And then you don't need all this extra BS and they said this in an interview and they said that in an interview. And especially you don't need to ask, has the SEC uh, been contacted uh, regarding, um, you know, Peter Beck's statements on neutron readiness. And I guess they want to have um, the, the copies of the communications. So this is again, Total BS. So my, if you put a gun to my head, I tried to find the source of this one. I was unable to find where this is coming from. And based on what I see is it's a clip together interviews mixed with a bunch of opinions, mixed with a lot of points that uh, is made to look like they can be major concerns, but there is easy uh, workarounds um, around them. My guess would be that this comes from either a competitor who is trying to discredit Rocket Lab to not get into the NSSL uh, lane two or lane one, I forget which one is which, uh, or it's a consultant company to one of the competitors uh, or a lobby firm or, uh, or yeah, a, a lawyer firm, something like this, who has had the incentive to spend weeks because the 252 pages of documents collected, that is very, very serious work. Uh, I don't think that any of this document is, uh, you know, doctored or altered in any way. I think that these are all real documents, uh, but none of the things here uh, raise any concerns uh, with me. And um, I'm very calm. I sleep very well at night as a Rocket Lab investor. Again, look at the hot fire test. Uh, and honestly, um, if you think that Peter Beck is a person who would PR you and uh, blow smoke up your butt and lie to you about neutron readiness, uh, about the Archimedes engine being ready, about you know the pad progress that we can follow by pictures, uh, and, and you're worried about this, I honestly think that you did not do enough due diligence on this company. And I think that just for that reason, you need to sell your shares or you need to sit down and do a crap ton of due diligence so that you can keep the shares. Um, if you really truly know this company, this will leave you 100% unfazed. So this was a monster gigantic video. Please let me know in the comments if you watched to the end. Uh, I'm curious how many of you did uh, and if it gave you any value. Uh, and other than that, I'm going to do a video about Rocket Lab's new valuation because um, I think many of us don't value Rocket Lab correctly and we give zero valuation to Rocket Lab's possible future constellation. And I understand why we do it. Uh, but at the same time, if you have a company like ASTS who is valued at $8 billion on zero revenue and only on future plans, uh, regarding a constellation, I don't think it's correct to give Rocket Lab zero. Uh, and on top of it, in the latest interviews, um, Adam Spice has given some pointers. So I'm going to use those pointers uh, and actually value Rocket Lab space infrastructure and see um, how much that changes the fair value of Rocket Lab. I think the fair value of Rocket Lab is between eight to to ten dollars, somewhere there. But again, I'm giving zero credit to the constellation. Uh, I suspect it will greatly change once you give uh, any value to the constellation and uh, that will be the topic of the next video. Anyways, please make sure you subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao, ciao.